Good morning and welcome to Morning Devos with Pastor Mark. Good to see everybody this morning. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, <clears throat> I just got done watching uh, The Morning Light with Pastor Ralph. If you missed that, you really need to check it out today. It's very good. And I mean, he does a great job every day, but um, I just want you guys to um, make sure you check that out if you, if you have time um, because it's really good on just listening to the voice of God. Um, and listening to that still small voice, incredible. So, uh, Pastor Ralph, really good job this morning. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, meditating on God's Word. This really came out of uh, some conversa- several conversations that I had yesterday with people, and it was incredible. I just um, We had a great Bible study early in the morning with Shop Talk. Um, and, um, we had, I had, uh, conversations with actually just different people from like all different, uh, areas, uh, in our ministry here. And, uh, just this subject just keeps coming up is just the meditating on God's word, the knowing of his word. And, uh, one of the subjects that came up on this is the fact that we live in a time right now where we have, especially here in the United States, we have more access to God's Word than we ever have. I mean, I think about how many different... I've got three different translations of the Bible just sitting on my table here. Um, I mean, like I've got a, I've got an NIV. And, okay, maybe I've only got two. but um, And then I've got my uh, Christian Standard Bible. I've got... Uh, I preach... Uh, every week out of the ESV, the English Standard Version, and we have, and, and I love the NLT too, I mean just really good, uh, uh, readable, user-friendly translations, and then not to mention all the translations that we have on our phones, I mean if you have a Bible app, you can have from King James to, um, to the, all the way to the message, you know, you can, you can read it. Anywhere you got it in the palm of your hand, you got it sitting in your pocket. We have more access to the Word of God than we ever have. But the sad part is, is our knowledge of God's Word is probably lower than it's ever been. We have so many things that we that we read, and we and we often we can even even seasoned believers will, will sit and um, can read the words, but not, it, sometimes it doesn't always sink in. Now, that's not true of everybody, obviously. We know that uh, we, in fact, I'm very blessed um, and um, to be serving the church that I'm at, uh, is we have so many people who are just hungry, hungry for God's Word. And I think of, when I think of that hungering for God's Word, I think of a teacher uh, by the name of Ray Vanderlaan, who actually is a I don't know if he's still doing this, and he might be retired now, but uh, uh, he was a uh, high school um, Bible teacher in Holland, Michigan, and he has done over the years several videos through Focus on the Family of uh, stories in the Holy Land, and um, he actually goes to the Holy Land and teaches right in the spots where Jesus was teaching, or where some of these events took place. My point is, is that we need, there needs to be a deeper hunger for God's Word in the Christian community at large. And I mean that across the board with, with all believers. We have so many wonderful people who love, who love Jesus, um, who don't really know what's going on in His Word. Um, and, uh, I'll give you a for instance. Let's just take a for instance. Let's. I'm just. And this was not posted. But let's go to Matthew. Okay. Now I'm going to read through this, and this is just from Matthew chapter one, starting at verse. Two. Well, let's just start at verse one. Okay. And I want you to think about how much you get from what I'm about to read. Okay. An account of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham, father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father. Jacob fathered Judah and his brothers. Judah fathered Perez and Zerah. 
And by Tamar, Perez fathered Hezron, Hezron fathered Aram, Aram fathered Aminadab, Aminadab fathered Nashan, Nashan fathered Salmon, Salmon fathered Boaz by Rahab, Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth, Ru o Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered King David. King David fathered Salmon, or Solomon by Uriah's wife, Solomon fathered Rehoboam, Rehoboam fathered Abijah, Abijah fathered Azza, Azza fathered Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat fathered Joram, Joram fathered Uzziah, Uzziah fathered Jotham, Jotham fathered Ahaz, Ahaz fathered Hezekiah, Hezekiah fathered Manasseh, Manasseh fathered, fathered Ammon, Ammon fathered Josiah, and Josiah fathered Jeconiah and his brothers. At that time, the ex of the exile of Babylon. <laughs> After the exile of Babylon, Jeconiah fathered Shealtiel, Shealtiel fathered Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel fathered Abuid, Abuid fathered Eliakim, Eliakim fathered Azor, Azor fathered Zadok, Zadok fathered Akim, Akim fathered Eliud, Eliud fathered Eleazar, Eleazar fathered Mathan, Mathan fathered Jacob, and Jacob fathered Joseph, the husband of Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, who was called Jesus Christ. Now, I burned through that. How much did you get from it? And we have a lot of scripture, especially in in the uh, Pentateuch or the Torah, where there are genealogies triple times as long as this of Jesus Christ. And this is just the one in Matthew. I won't go through the one in Luke because it's even more detailed than the one in Matthew. My point being, is so often we read the words on the page, but we don't slow down to meditate on God's Word. And so what I want us to do is to think about for just a moment, what is God telling us to do with His Word? And why is this important? Why is God's Word so important to the Christian faith? This is a question that, I, um, that I've been challenged with, that, that um, I think we are all challenged with if we step back for a moment and think about it. So let's go back. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and listen to what God is saying to the Israelites at that time. So Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 4. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words I am giving you today are to be on your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house. And when you walk along the road. And when you lie down. And when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. Okay? God is very specific about what he wants us to do with his word. He and this is and this is just the first time that God tells us this in scripture. But listen to this. These words I'm giving you are to be on your heart. Talk about them. I mean, he wants us to talk about this in just our normal conversation. And when that actually happens, that is probably one of the most exciting things for me. Um, not as a pastor, but more, even more so as a, just as a believer, that we are really thinking about what God's Word is trying to tell us today. What is God speaking to you today when you read His Word? Are, you, are we burning through it and missing the bigger picture? Or are we meditating on it day and night? Are these words written on our heart? Are we thinking about it so much that we're going to maybe even write it down? <laughs> maybe you're not going to write it on your arm or have it plastered to your forehead. But I mean, but that's the desire that God has for us is that it, we are so close to His Word. This is the connection that God has with us as believers this is how we get to know him better. And no, I know, I know that back when this was all put together, that they didn't, we didn't just have a Bible just oh, appear before us. But 
it was put together, it was gathered together by men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit that God ordained for them to put these things together. And there's a reason why these things are here and written. I mean, is this telling, I mean, God's word is not telling us to do horrible things. It is teaching us to draw near to Him and to try and be more like Him. Not in a prideful manner, but in a in the most humble of, of manners that you can think of. Now let's jump over to Joshua chapter 1. And this is one I go back to probably, I don't know if, if you can say too often, but, but I, there's a reason why God keeps bringing me back to these things. And I guess i got to share that with you. So Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Be strong and courageous, for you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance. Above all, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the whole instruction. Now this is, usually I'm focusing on the be strong and courageous in this, which is good. We need to, ooh, I'm running out of battery. Um, but, uh. Right now, I want us to think about where he's saying to observe carefully the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. So he's telling Joshua, God's telling Joshua, everything that God that Moses wrote down in these first five books, I want you to, to remember. I want you to learn these things. Do not turn from it to the right or the left so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful that you may carefully observe everything written in it for then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do now i'm not going to finish that part because that's the, this is really what i want us to focus on is he's saying meditate on this word day and night don't turn to the right or to the left from it Stay focused on what God's teaching you. So I'm going to move fast because my phone's dying and I don't have a charger right now. So um, jump to Psalm chapter 1. He's saying, How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted by beside flowing streams that bears fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither whatever he does prospers again here we are God's telling the psalmist to write this down to meditate on God's instruction or his word day and night this needs to be a regular part of our lives um, I just heard the other day Phil Robertson say that um, our faith runs Monday through Saturday and we get recharged on Sunday and so living this out has got to be Monday through Saturday we got to do this every day here we go again Psalm 119 verse starting at verse 97 he says this how I love your instruction it is my meditation all day long your commands make me wiser than my enemies for they are always with me I have more insight than all my teachers because your decrees are my meditations. I understand more than the elders because I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from, ev from every evil path to follow your word. I have not turned from your judgments for you yourself have instructed me how sweet your words is. Your word is to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, every false, every, therefore I hate every false way. What is the psalmist saying here? He's saying that we need to stay in God's word. Here it is. This is like number four, fourth time I've um, found. That. I'm sure there's way more than this, but he's also giving a charge to apply this to our hearts, to our lives. To put it into action, which makes me think of James chapter 1, um, starting at verse 20, what did I say? Uh, verse 22. Listen to what James, this is the brother of Jesus, so I'm jumping all the way to the back, I know. Um, he says this, 
but be doers of the word, not and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone who is looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works, this person will be blessed in what he does. And so, again, read the Word. Meditate on the Word. Reflect on the Word. Talk about the Word. Talk about what God's speaking to you through His Word. Apply it to our lives and live it out Monday through, well, Monday through Sunday, really. But live the, living this out every day of our lives. It's not just church on Sunday. It's not just church on Wednesday. It's not just in Bible study. It's every day. And this is what God is calling us to. Here's These are five different areas where, where we speak of this. And so instead of just zipping through it, slow down. It's okay. The Bible is not, <laughs> not going anywhere. Okay? God's Word is here with you. Take the time. Take your time with it. You don't have to burn through a book in a month. That's why I'm notorious for taking forever to get through even these some of these short books when we're studying them. But that's because there's so much for us to gain from them that I I I, I want to. It's almost like um, Thoreau trying to suck the marrow out of life, but we want to get the meat out of the Word of God. May you guys be blessed today. Thank you so much for listening. Let me pray for you, Lord Jesus. Everybody who is here today and everybody who comes across this broadcast today, I pray that you will put a fire in their hearts to study, to meditate, to live out your word today in this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow. <laughs>